The year is 1776. Beware of my stick of liberty! The colony is battle with my worst enemy. France has an idea. Bonjour! Hey, uh, take this bag of money. Also take this sort of liberty. Fortune has smiled upon me, responds the 13 colonies. Oh, but that was actually the USA daydreaming of their past. As they look off at the chaos with Russia versus Ukraine. Howdy, little patriot. I'm giving you my sword of liberty. I gave it to Afghanistan, but he he tried to sell it. I trust you though. It's great for slaughtering colonizers, they say to Ukraine. You got something that'll explode? Yeah, the tanks are out back. I mean, the sword is a nice gesture, but uh, yeah, we need a little bit more in 2023. I mean, then again, even back in the 1700s, a sword, you know, probably wasn't going to help that much. I mean, all the muskets basically had swords on them at the same time. Don't forget, France also gave you a bag of money. Uh, Ukraine can still use that. Ah, uh, just a straight up bag of money, a gift that transcends time. In a way, we kind of are taken after our Papa France in a way when they helped us with our independence. Considering how Americans meme France, though, here 200 years later, uh, does that mean that Ukraine is destined to do the same thing to us? France going to start making fun of us for losing in Vietnam. Ja! After so many years, me and work is of complete. Ooh, advanced lookings. What is? Asks Poland. Die coffee machine. <laughs> Considering Germany's past, I wasn't really sure where this punchline was going. <sighs> we dodged a bullet there. Very glad they're just making coffee nowadays and not military weapons. They probably do take the same amount of time, effort, and research that they did back in the day to make their coffee, though. Big fans over there. Germany actually created the first electric drip coffee maker back in 1954. This does look pretty intricate, not gonna lie. Funny enough, though, the first ever espresso machine was made in 1884. That's so long ago. This wasn't very popular back in the day. And then this German entrepreneur invented the first paper coffee filter brewing system. So Germany's actually been obsessed with their coffee for quite some time. The Germans and their engineering. Oh no, the apocalypse is happening on Earth. What do we do now? I think we're going to the kingdom of heaven. A chap, says the spirit of the British ball. Meanwhile, we have all the other country ball spirits moving up to the heavens. Before make proceed in kingdom of heaven, says Israel. You may take an object with you from the old world. Uh, France, why have you brought a guillotine to the literal kingdom of heaven? To decapitate the king. The king of heaven. France, can you not? France, just please stop. Can you can you let it go? I know that's your thing here to just eliminate all kings, but you don't you don't need to always do it. I get before the apocalypse, but not in the afterlife too. I was trying to see if I could figure out all the other objects that were brought by other country balls here. I don't know if Germany's bringing some books. We have Indonesia bringing their hat. The British have definitely got to bring some sort of tea machine, right? And the Poles just bringing their teeth. I don't know. Does this mean France is about to start riots in heaven? Like, there's like a bunch of protesters on the streets. I'm playing this new Zelda game. Um, what's it called? Tears of the Kingdom. Why is it not Tears of the Republic? Oh yeah, they would say that, wouldn't they? Also, this monarchist ball would totally be playing a game called Tears of the Kingdom. Although, then again, wouldn't it be very depressing to them? Because... Yeah, I wonder why a ball that believes in republicism is even near a monarchist ball seems like a recipe for disaster Historically it emphasizes in the idea of self-rule and citizenship in a state organized as a republic This ball is probably no longer a fan of the Zelda games anymore another year another Eurovision this time the 2023 results honestly as an American This is actually how I figure out what countries do well and which countries don't I just look at the memes I still find it fascinating though Germany literally placed last how did that happen? They got 26th place. Remember that the Eurovision Song Contest is an international song competition organized annually by the European Broadcasting Union. So we pretty much have almost all of Europe participating. Oh yeah, and also Australia. I don't really know how that happened, but uh, that is a big meme. To be fair, it looks like Morocco and Israel competed in last year's competition. So Germany got last, but the UK got second to last. I guess they have a good excuse. They organized the entire contest anyways. Serbia third from last. Portugal fourth from last. Didn't win, but at least spend time with family, says Albania. Played all night as if it was no tomorrow, says Slovenia. Please, I don't want to be a soldier. Am neutral country, says Switzerland. Nice job, Poland. You got pretty up there. Then there's Moldova, Spain, France. France says, standing here so high is so uncomfortable. At least it pays to be funny, says Austria. This song be for my future lovers, says Armenia. Croatia, seeming like they're having a pretty good time. Lithuania and Cyprus complaining about their hearts. Czechia saying that's a win for the Slavic sisters. I promised it's going to be all right, says Australia. No more excuses. 
time to build this bridges now, says Estonia. Because of you, Eurovision, I know I am strong, says Belgium. Last year's winner, Ukraine, didn't win this time. Nothing in the world could stop me, says Norway. Singing in Italian was worth it, says Italy. What a phenomenal result, says, wait, I like the unicorn. Finland, now happy they can finally drink their pina colada. And finally, number one, Sweden. They have won another Eurovision championship. Looking into the history of Eurovision wins, I know that the Irish were really powerful back in the 90s, yet it doesn't seem like they were even here in 2023. First winner was Switzerland back in 1956, and it has gone on ever since. This is what I mean. The Irish won in 1987, then they won three years in a row, 92 to 94, then they won again in 96. They're literally like the Chicago Bulls of singing song competitions. The last three winners have been Sweden this year, then Ukraine and Italy. There's now actually a tie between the top countries, Sweden and Ireland, with the most wins ever. They both have seven. Meanwhile, France, Luxembourg, the UK, and Netherlands are stuck at five. This is literally one of my favorite annual country ball comics to take a look at. Oil exports. Come on, guys, says the USA. Oh, looks like it's only $10 for a pint of oil. Car exports. Deutsches car, best car. Too many exports. Watch oh, just China behind a bunch of cardboard boxes. Finally, the best export of them all. And as we all know, it is definitely Moldova with the best music. Not only the Numa Numa song, but also the Eurovision internet meme classic. And no, this is not me. I did not perform for Moldova back in 2016. Or, sorry, 2012. If they want me to remake it, though, I can do that. And those are just among the most popular. They still have so many more. Somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, 150 years after the collapse. Hello, Father... Uncle DC, I thought you died. What are you doing here? Delivering the mail can't leave these papers stranded after all. The mail, I wonder if the UK survived or China or Russia. Man, I haven't talked to anyone except Canada for years. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Found it. It's taxes. The taxes are due. By the way, Uncle, your passport expired 142 years ago, so I'm gonna have to deport you. You definitely can't have a weird uncle with an expired passport living in your house. That's just how strange things happen. Completely not surprised, even the apocalypse, this is the only thing DC is concerned about. More bureaucratic things, they're gonna keep that whole thing going. I guess as our country's capital, that's pretty much all they know. We shouldn't be surprised. The mail's gonna keep going, it's just gonna take 140 years for it to come back. Have you finished this year's travel advisory guide? That way our people know which countries are naughty or not. Oh, you bet I have, says Australia. Someone says off screen. Let me see, let me see. Hmm, where to travel? All good. Yellow's probably bad. Boy, mate, you maybe don't. And then red, um, yeah. Wait a second, the US is in yellow. What is this? You put me in yellow with all the bad countries? Not bad, just unsafe, son. Meanwhile, later. You should have seen it. They basically put me in a tier with all the dangerous countries. I'm with Mexico. So did I, responds Canada. Wait, what? You too? I just don't feel as safe. Ha ha ha. You and your safe spaces. It's plenty safe here, responds the USA. Oh, okay. Apparently Canada only feels safe in the airports. Something I've learned about reviewing different countries' travel advisory maps is that it is, uh, it's a really political thing. A lot of the time, some countries get put into a tier because of politics, so you can't really always trust it. I mean, to be fair, the U.S. still has almost all of Europe considered in the yellow tier because of COVID. Really not rolling out with many updates. One of the best things to do is to look at a wide variety of travel advisory maps and then take the average that you see. If they get enough level one, just exercise normal precautions, it's probably safe to say it's okay to travel there. It's also become kind of an annual tradition. I love when a new travel advisory map drops. I think after the apocalypse, all became a little broken in our own little way. Russia, fabulous! Russia, queen of glitters! Russia has finally embraced her soft side. Hon, 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 hon. Actually, that's like the French laugh. It's more like, ho, 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 ho. Maybe. I don't know. Finland not longer can be serious anymore. It just sits around laughing. I think they got into some of Jamaica and the Netherlands special substances. We as bestest friends forever and ever and ever, says the Koreas. The Koreas better not talk of Zim. Yeah, this is definitely the most horrible consequence of the apocalypse so far. And then finally, there's Poland. Almost got you, little bready. <laughs> Curve my mine toast burns. Actually, 
Pon fine. Not change one bit. Glad to see some things never change even in the apocalypse. I can't tell what is my favorite change though so far. Finland or Russia? I mean, uh, Korea working together like this is just, it, it's, it just freaks me out a little bit. It just doesn't feel right. But man, this Russia, pretty epic. Seems like both Poland and France hasn't really changed much. Although then again, where is France guillotine at? Maybe they have changed a whole lot. What are the other horrible things the Armageddon is hiding from us? Let us unite, says DC to all the state balls. Classic Texas right here, as well as the inbred child that is Ohio. Probably in some way or another related to Nepal. A lot of credit because I think all the states are actually here, even Alaska and Hawaii. One nation united under God, indivisible with liberty and justice. Cut to Europe trying the very same thing. Germany says, let us unite. Okay, first of all, you're the last country that should be saying this. In varietate unitus, united in diversity. It, oh, that's, was this Latin? Okay, I'm not sure it really achieved the same effect as the United States, but um, yeah, you definitely did something. I think like I said, uh, their problem here is the person on top of the cardboard box. You know, someone else should have been here. Germany already tried twice to unite the continent of Europe. It was just in a lot more aggressive way. Love the accuracy. There does seem to be a British ball missing here. Meanwhile, this is how things are going so far in the EU. Is this a Czechia ball with a Texas flag? At least crying. Some sort of sequel to the Titanic. Romania might possibly be a slave. Bulgaria is having a tough time. The Baltics are just really focused, I think, on Russia here. Hungary's trying to save them, I think. And the lowlands are just, uh, well, they're just being the, the lowlands. Man, oh man, these similarities are crazy. Let's not pretend there's not some chaos happening in the US, though. Maybe they're just hiding it a little bit better. It's all underneath those shades right here. This is definitely one way to look at it, though. And big thanks to my patrons. I am the kidnapper, and I've moved Drew to a Patagonian Australia village. Australia is real. Drew I'm not a paid Argentinian actor. Grandpa. The slow, depressing Drew Portugal Dornel collapse. Colorblind. Asher, 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 Asher,